Welcome back. In today's video, we are going to study about Ophoritis. Ophoritis, the term is split into two. Ufo means the ovaries and itis is the inflammation. So you can see the inflammation of ovaries in this picture and the healthy ovary on the other side. The isolated infection of the ovaries is a very rare condition. It will be affected along with the fallopian tubes. If the inflammation of the fallopian tubes occurs, it is salpingitis. And together, the inflammation of both ovaries and the fallopian tubes, the nomenclature is salpingoophoritis. Since both the fallopian tube and the ovaries are inflamed, together salpingoophoritis. The affection of the ovary from the tubal infection is occurring by the following routes. So guys, you can see here, this tube are the ones which will be affected first. And then from the tube, the infection is spreading to the ovaries. So let us see the different routes. The first route is direct. Directly, the exudate which is contaminating the ovarian surface is coming out of the fallopian tube and it is producing the periophoritis. You can see the exudate directly going and affecting the ovaries and it is producing periophoritis. Periophoritis is the inflammation of the tissues around the ovary. Then the second route is through lymphatics. First one was the direct route. Second is through lymphatics. The lymphatics especially of the mesosalpings and mesovarium. You can see the mesosalpings and mesovarium where it is located. And this mesosalpings and mesovarium through the lymphatics it is affecting the ovaries. So you can see through the lymphatics the ovaries are being affected and there will be inflammation of the ovaries. And they will produce the interstitial oophoritis. The third route is through blood. Blood bone mumps. Mumps is a viral infection which is caused by paramyxovirus. It is usually affecting the salivary glands and through the blood it will enter the ovaries. Here in the females it will produce oophoritis whereas the males it will produce sterility. Through the rent of ovulation producing interstitial oophoritis. Again, interstitial oophoritis is occurred because of the process of ovulation when the ovum breaks through the follicle and then the follicle is breaking open, uh, break opens and then the egg will be released into the cavity. When this ovum is released from the ovary, it will release a kind of irritating fluid which is causing the interstitial oophoritis. If the organisms are very severe, an abscess will be formed and it is known as tubo-ovarian abscess. It is a complex infectious mass of the adnexa which is occurring as a result of the infection of the fallopian tube. Now you can see this tubo-ovarian mass. First the inflammation of the fallopian tubes and then from here the masses will be formed you can appreciate it in the next picture okay now you can see the right tubal abscess and the left tubo ovarian abscess in others the ovaries will be adherent to the tubes so you can see the other things what happens these ovaries will start adhering okay now you can see the right ovary this ovary starts adhering to the fallopian tubes or it will start adhering to the intestine. This is the intestine and it will start adhering to the omentum of the intestine. And we have different sites in the ovaries being adhering to the tubes, intestine, omentum or the pelvic peritoneum. And then it will produce the tubo-ovarian mass. Such a mass will usually be bilateral. And the direct affection of the ovaries without the tubal uh, involvement will be in case of mumps and influenza. So usually the tubes, uh, this ovaries will always be connected with the inflammation of the fallopian tubes. If only the ovaries, isolated infection is occurring of the ovaries, then it is only in the conditions of mumps and influenza. In mumps, there is no sterilizing like in males, there is no sterility in females, but it is only affecting the ovaries. 
This is because the capsule of the ovary is uh, elastic and the ischemic injury to the graphene follicle is not likely. So we have a capsule. Okay, the ovary has a capsule and the graphene follicle will not be affected. Usually what happens if there is an infection, then the blood supply will be cut off and there will be ischemia and the death of the follicle. But here the ovaries will contain a very hard thick capsule. So the viral infection cannot affect and no ischemia will be produced. Whereas in men, it will affect the testicles producing sterility. In females, there is no sterility because we have a capsule and the graphene follicle is protected. Even if some follicles are damaged in some cases, many other follicles will be left behind to carry on the reproductive function. Now let us move on to the clinical features of oophoritis. How does a patient present with? The patient will have the abdominal tenderness rebound tenderness, cervical and uterine motion tenderness, adnexal tenderness. So a marked degree of pain tenderness is present in all the structures abdominal, cervical, adnexal and also the cer uh, cervical and uterine. So the uh, tenderness is rebound tenderness. So we have the temperature more than 38 degrees Celsius since it is itis the inflammation uh, infection is there so the leukocytosis count will also be increased to more than 10,000 per mm cube. The purulent material from the peritoneal cavity if there is a tubo ovarian abscess forming so we have the purulent material from the peritoneal cavity you can observe it by the laparoscopy or by the process of caldosynthesis. The pelvic abscess or tubo ovarian mass on the bimanual examination or sonography can be appreciated. The treatment for oophoritis, outpatient therapy we have oflaxin 400 mg PO twice daily is given for 14 days. Along with oflaxin the metronidazole 500 mg PO twice daily again for 14 days. The patient has to be admitted for the inpatient therapy if there is no response for the next 3 days in spite of taking oflaxin and metronidazole. To, for the inpatient therapy, the patient will have a temperature of more than 39 degrees Celsius. He'll have a toxic look and the lower abdominal guarding and rebound tenderness present. Inpatient therapy is done by clindamycin 900 mg IV is given for 8 hardly. Along with clindamycin, we also give gentamicin 2 mg per kg of the patient. Again, IV followed by 1.5 mg per kg IV again, every 8 hours is given. So, clindamycin and gentamicin. Clindamycin and gentamicin is followed by doxycycline 100 mg twice daily orally for 14 days. IV fluid should be given to correct the dehydration and the nasogastric suction in the presence of abdominal distension. So, if there is abdominal distension or ileus present, we have to give the nasogastric suction so that the uh, intestines are at rest and a quick recovery can be there. Laprotomy is done if there is a clinical suggestion of the abscess rupture. Thank you. With this, we come to an end of oophoritis. If you like my video, hit the like button and subscribe.